Hey everybody, Brian Tro coming to you from Mossy Creek Fly Fishing with your fly fishing forecast. The date today is October 31st, so happy Halloween to everybody out there. So let's get started with the forecast. Um, a little bit of rain outside today, not quite enough. Um, looks like they're going to call for they're calling for a little bit more today in this evening. Um, don't get me wrong, every bit helps, but we are still really, really dry. So some of the same issues that we've had the last few weeks we're still dealing with right now. Um, brook trout are spawned up uh, up in the mountains. Uh, brown trout are spawned up. Uh, the leaves are falling down, although I'd say about 50% of them are, are done. So that's, that's good news. Um, so you got to be really selective about where you go and what you target. Uh, for, for us, it's uh, going to some of the delayed harvests that have been opened up already. They just opened up the Piney delayed harvest. Uh, there's Back Creek delayed harvest. Um, the South River's got you know pretty good water flow for this time of year. Uh, the Spring Creeks, Buffalo Creek, uh, Mossy Creek, Beaver Creek. Uh, these are all fishing really well. So a lot of the lakes to the west here in the National Forest have been stocked. They're really pretty this time of year too. A lot of fun to fish. So. Go ahead, pick your battles. Um, we've been on the Shenandoah just a little bit here and there, trying to catch some uh, late season bass, uh, doing a little bit of musky fishing, but again, they are really spooky. We need water levels to come up a little bit. We need water color, um, and we need to get rid of the last of this, uh, this leaf litter. So the name of the game is this time of year, if you're gonna go to, to Mossy Creek or one of these delayed harvests, the name of the game is go small in the fall, okay? When you go and look in the bin or you're looking in your fly box and you're trying to select flies, everybody comes this time of year and says, you know, what should I be fishing? There's not a lot of things hatching, um, which is true. There are a few things. If you're, if you're on the spring creeks or still on overcast days, you're gonna have blueing olives. They hatch all year. Um, there's a few trichos left over still. There's a few terrestrials left over still. But for the most part, the food that exists exists below the surface. And all the all the mayflies and caddisflies that were hatched from last year are in the streams. They're very small. Okay. So pick your size of your fly based on the flows. Right now we're clear and we're low. Just uh, as an example, uh, here in the store we'll have pheasant tails and traditional pheasant tail, which is no bead, nothing. It'll sink, but it takes time to get down. It's very light, hits the water gently. Next size up is your brass head, okay, which has got a little bit more weight, throws a little shine, uh, gets you down a little bit quicker, and then you've got your tungsten jigged pheasant tail, which is going to fish upside down and it's going to be super heavy, okay. And then within those three categories, you've got, you know, a pheasant tail all the way down to size 20, all the way up to a size 10, okay. This time of year, you need to be fishing your smaller sizes because the bugs themselves are, in fact, smaller. And you need to be fishing your smaller sizes too, so you get a good balance for the flow, for the depth of the water, how hard it hits, et cetera, okay? So everything needs to be sized down. Uh, your tippets and your leaders, if you're fishing size 18s, you need to be at 6X. Um, if you're fishing size 16 or 14, you can start to move up to, to 5X, all right? Um, a lot of people have questions about fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon tippets can be really beneficial, but you only need them when you really need them, okay? Just because the water is clear and low doesn't mean you always need fluorocarbon, all right? Fluorocarbon is, has less shine to it, okay? Uh, which helps on those sunny days. It helps them not see as easily as they would see the reflection of your monofilament. And also fluorocarbon has a specific gravity slightly more than water. So instead of sitting on the surface and creating little dimples which create shadows down below, the fluorocarbon is going to sit just below the surface, which means it's not going to refract light, okay, or throw light with the curvatures of those uh, dimples, all right? This may all seem really like microscopic, but trust me, you can see it. If I can see it as an angler from, you know, 25 feet away, the little shadows that it's creating, then the fish certainly can see it. So um, if you need to size down, size down, and if you need to go to a fluorocarbon tip, it, it, it can be worth it, okay? Fluorocarbon also is a lot more abrasion resistant, so once you get that fish on and you're fighting them, if they're running you around rocks, etc., cetera, uh, monofilament can shave, all right? And as it shaves, it just weakens in strength. Um, fluorocarbon also 
has a much longer shelf life. So you may say, oh man, it's, it's like three or four times more expensive, but it's also gonna last three or four times longer. Okay, so use it sparingly, use it in the right conditions. These conditions that we have around the state right now warrant it. So if you're gonna go fish these spring creeks, and you have a warmer afternoon, like uh, tomorrow it's gonna be 72 degrees, and you still hear the crickets, they're out there. I can still hear them, even though we've had several freezes, there's still a few around. If you wanna prospect, prospect with some of your bigger hoppers, hang a little dropper off the back. Um, but if you wanna go subsurface, just fishing nymphs that get down to the bottom, um, <clears throat> but don't hit the water too hard and don't spook fish is the way to go. Hopefully the state will be bringing on some more delayed harvests, uh, like North River delayed harvest is not open yet for the season, and Passage Creek delayed harvest. They're not gonna stock these until they get better water flow in them. So uh, not a lot of rain in the forecast for the next five or six days, but something important happens this time of year, which really helps because people say, man, if we don't get any rain, things are just gonna drop, drop, drop until they dry up. That's not really what happens in the fall. We have um, you know groundwater flow, a lot of these streams are fed by groundwater and springs. And as the trees drop all their leaves, they stop sap and they stop sucking all those waters up, okay? Um, also, the days are shorter, the nights are longer, the sun angle's lower. So we just lose less and less water to evaporation and we lose less and less water to all the vegetation. All the vegetation dies back, kind of goes dormant. So what happens is the the water table balances out. It pretty much levels off. So even if we're not getting rain, you're not gonna see it drop a whole lot. And that also means when we finally do get rain, it really helps bump your water levels up. A lot of it goes into the ground, into the stream, as opposed to being evaporated off. So just need a couple of decent storms and it'll push things right over the top. Um, also need to get these fish uh, that are all spawned up and garden nests and all that good stuff wrapped up. And then we'll have some good guidelines for everybody moving forward. On the spring creeks like uh, Mossy Creek and Beaver Creek, places where there's some brown trout spawned up, the date to kind of keep in the back of your head is around Veterans Day, like the 11th of November. That's usually when most of the fish are, the hens are definitely off the nest by then and a lot of the males are pretty much done guarding. So you're gonna see them come off. They're gonna be silvery. They're gonna, have lose, they're gonna lose their color and they're gonna want a big payday. That's when the streamer fishing really starts to pick back up on some of these uh, spring creeks. So anyway, fingers crossed for some rain. We'll give you guys some good musky reports once we get a little bit better flow. Um, right now, you can go. The water temperature's right. They're hungry, they're eating, but they're just spooky. Um, and you catch a lot of leaves. So you can definitely go and do it, but you just have to have some patience. Um, well, if you're a musky fisherman, you have to have a lot of patience anyway. All right, uh, tying a lot. We're here in the tying room. We've got great, a ton of stuff coming in today. We're kind of going into fly tying season. So, uh, you know, give us a call, um, email us or stop by, ask questions about places to go, ask questions about tying stuff. Um, that's what we're here for. And everybody have a wonderful Halloween.